ko te pai tawhiti whaia ki a tata, ko te pai tata whakamaua ki a tina. Seek out the distant horizons while cherishing those achievements at hand. Pretty lofty, but uh, words that will ring true, and that's the title of our kōrero from our thought leader, Kaylee Jones, um, tonight. Kaylee is a wonderful mother of three, uh, three children whom I've met um, and do enjoy her youngest Hulk smash. Um, <laughs> she has been an educator in Waitaha for many years in both English and Māori medium settings. Um, she is a, currently a lecturer in the School of Education at Te Whariwānanga o Waitaha, University of Canterbury, he tino pūkenga. Um, her research interests include kaupapa Māori education, bilingual education, kayako experiences and pūrāko, uh, culturally empowering pedagogies, te reo Māori and Māori flourishing as Māori. Kaylee is nearing the end of her doctoral journey, so those of you who have been in doctoral journeys, marvel at that and take a deep breath. Um, her doctoral journey included listening to the unique pūrāko of kayapo connected to partial immersion in educational spaces. Um, sitting at the ngāko of Kaylee's research interests are opportunities to empower ākonga Māori and wider hapori Māori. Um, and she is published. Um, but perhaps more personally, I have had the immense privilege of being her student for the last two years um, in the Omiri Paunamu uh, programme at UC, a programme for which she has been recognised with because she is too, too humble to send these through as part of her biography notes, um, <laughs> with the UC Teaching Award in 2020, and recognised nationally with the prestigious Ako Aotearoa Award. Um, and she is one of the most humble, extraordinary people I have ever met. Ngā mihi nui ki a koe e kahu kōrako, kei taku kuru paunamu, mau i tū hei pau toko manawa, uh, mō tōku hairinga Māori. Um, nau i pākari ai te tū, um, a tēnei ākonga pīrere i tēnei ao. Um, nō reira, kā nui, ngā mihi o te ngākau, ki a koe, nō mai haere mai. And in my haste, I've shut PowerPoint down, trying to minimise background applications, so please be with me as I um, bring the presentation back up. Aloha mai ihoa. You do your thing for it. Um, Ko wai a pū te awa, ngā te pōra te iwi. Ko tēnei a hakurangi maunga maunga haumi maunga mehi atu nei ki a koutou kātua. Uh, rangi nui ki runga papa tu ana kuki ki raru, me o rāua, tamariki, tēnā rā koutou. Uh, mehi ana ki te maunga tapu o Aoraki, te whakaruru hauma tātou. Tēnā koe. Rere nei ki tēnei takiwā, kei raro e te koro ai o ngai tue huriru, mau ka tere mau ngā raka huri awa, tēnā rā korua. Uh, e tangi tonu nei, te ngākau e ngā mate. Mate tata nei o te, uh, o te wiki o te marama o te tai. Tangi nei, tangi nei, oki oki ai. Te wā mai mahara hoki ki o tātou nei tūpuna, ko a wehe ki te pō, ko a whawhai mō a tātou nei mokopuna ngā uri, ko a hiki mai nei. Moi mai rā, moi mai rā. A puti hono, tātai hono. A puti hono, tātai hono, te hunga mate ki te hunga mate. A puti hono, tātai hono, te hunga ora ki te hunga ora. Puri au ina ana ki a koutou ko a pai nei i tēnei o ngā rangi, whakahirahira mā tātou, kei raro i te manu o ngai tua huriri, te mana whenua, tēnā rā koutou kātua, kei aku nui ki aku rahi, rauraga tira mā, 
tēnā rākau tau. Ki ngā kai whakahaere o tēnei huinga, nei rā te ofa te whakameha kia koutou, ki tōku hoa, te pito whakarei, Alex, kua tono mai mo tēnei o ngā kaupapa, tēnā rau a te koe, he tino pau mo te te ao mā kauranga, mo a tātou nei tamariki mo te kuna. Ka pai, ko te pai tāwhiti, pai a ki a tata, ko te pai tata, pai a tata whakamaua ki a tina. It's an honour to kōrero with you this afternoon, whānau. This whakatauki is often spoken within te ao Māori to ensure we look to the distant horizons, we pursue our moe moe, our dreams, our visions, whilst also acknowledging our day-to-day -day issues, challenges, and cherish the successes. Um, today I'm going to tell you a story. It's a whānau story. Uh, mai ngā hau me tū mai rā, wai pāua, te re atu, re re mai. Taki pū, tū kaha, hei whakaruru hau mā tātou, mō te iwi o te aitanga māki. Ko Kayleigh Jones a hau. And this is a story about we. Big we and little we. Um... My father, Wee Jones, Wee Hardy Jones, grew up in Ngātapa, just out of Tūrana Nui Akiwa, Gisborne, in the presence of his maunga, Hikurangi, and maunga Homi. He was born in 1949. To Julia Reid and Francis Paranihi Hami Jones. He was a whāngai pēpi, raised by Emma Pewini and Ray Tuhue. The backdrop to his upbringing was the return of his father's, and his uncles from World War II, many also not returning. Māori urbanisation and curing guest connections from marae, language, cultural practices, whānau and homelands. Māori were pepper potted into predominantly uh, non-Māori suburbs, reinforcing disconnection. And as well as this, many Māori families of the time were making a choice to speak English in their homes and raise their tamariki as English speakers and that was the experience for my dad. Ka pai ko tēnei tōku whānau, tōku pāpa, Wee Jones and my boy Wee with my two younger tamariki in the middle. Ka pai. Ka pai. So to look at his experience which then um, influenced my experience within the world and within Te Ao Mātauranga and then the experience of my tamariki, me hoki whakamuri kia anga whakamua. We need to look back at the past in order to look to the future. Kapai. So let's have a wee look at this snapshot of what happened in the lead up to my dad and his experiences. 1862. Um, a school inspector reports to the House of Representatives that a refined education or a high mental culture would be inappropriate for Māori because they are better calculated by nature to get their living by manual rather than mental labour. And we still have that sort of kōrero today and that Māori are good with their hands. 1867 Native Schools Act. Um, teaching instruction to predominantly be in English. Schools for Māori, again, focused on manual labour, not academic subjects. 1913, going forward a bit. Uh, at this point in time, early 1900s, 90% plus of Māori school children and native speakers of Te Reo Māori, uh, both my father's biological whānau and the ones that brought him up as far my parents were native Te Reo Māori speakers. Uh, but the ones that brought him up as whāngai parents who calls mum and dad made a choice to not speak te reo Māori to any of those three or any of his um, siblings and that resulted in generations of language loss. Their language, their use of te reo Māori between each other was a language of secret. 1915, the Department of Education has an assimilation policy 
for Māori and low expectations for Māori students. In its annual report, it includes a statement from the Inspector of Native Schools. So far as the department is concerned, there is no encouragement given to Māori boys who wish to enter the learned professions. The aim is to, attun to turn the attention to manual industry, Māori, um, for which Māori are best suited. So this tone of, you know, Māori not going into academic um, or having that plaitākati, the horizons of success within an academic world, are per perpetuated. 1915, um, my name is Francis Jones, that's him there, uh, Dad's dad, was born three years later in 1918. He went on, like many of our Māori whānau, super hard workers, massive work ethic, and he worked in the freezing works up in Tairawhiti for 40 years. Why next, honey? 1920, Ta Apiranangata begins lecturing Māori about the need to promote Māori language culture in homes while still promoting English language in schools. And this year, my dad's father, who raised him, Ray Tuhui, was born. He was a native speaker of Tuhui Whakapapa. Uh, two years later, my nanny Julia Reid, my dad's biological mum, and that's her jacket there, and I've worn that jacket in other presentations. Um, also a native speaker of Te Reo Māori, was born. 1933. Māori MPs are permitted to speak briefly in Māori in the house if they provide an immediate interpretation. Pretty much meaning we'll allow you to speak to our Māori, but ignore you until you switch to English. Two years earlier, my nanny Frances Jones, my dad's father, left school at the age of 13 years old. That's the same age as my big boy we now, and I can't even imagine him leaving the schooling system at this point in time. By what? 19. Oh, this is a um, picture of the awards. My Cordell Francis Jones won in the um, Second World War, leading into the next slide. Kapai, so we've gone into 1939, Second World War. The Māori language is used in recruitment. So, although it's not okay to use it in schools, it's being um, diminished in homes. We've had Māori urbanisation throughout, so we've got disconnection from land and culture and language. It's okay to use in promotional material to get our whānau to go overseas and fight. Um, 3,600 Māori fight overseas, 650 die. 18% die. And that 18% predominantly native speakers of Te Māori. Skipping forward a few years, 1953. Um, this is the year my mum was born. Uh, mum was brought up in a home uh, that didn't acknowledge her taha Māori. It wasn't until she got further on in life that she knew about her whakapapa Māori. Nō raki uretia, she's from the bottom of the South Island. This is us on um, a trip to see her tūranga waiwai. She now, now knows about her Māori whakapapa, acknowledges and is proud of her whakapapa Māori and it's due to us, her tamariki and especially her mokopuna, that, that love um, for finding out more about her whakapapa as the Sierra Timu, um, is our tikuna fire. By 1953, 26% of Māori school can speak Māori. So do we remember the statistic from mm -hmm. before? So massive drop a whānau. In just a short amount of time, 95% in the early 1900s down to 26% in 40 years. Kapai, you know this, Fano, you know the stuff, the Hung Report. Um, seven years later, the Hung Report is released, it describes Māori language as a relic of ancient Māori life draws attention to the educational disparity between Māori and Pākehā and rejects assimilation now, but upgrades to integration. Uh, five years after the Hun report was released, my dad, 
a young 16 year old coming down to Te Waipanamu with his brother, looking for new opportunities, looking for that high tapati, the distant horizons. Uh, my father would have never fathomed before departure the stark difference of rural to Tairawhiti on the east coast of the North Island to the shores of Ōtautahi Christchurch, especially in the 1960s. Um, Dad made friends with many of the Rehua trade scheme boys, tra trade training scheme at um, Rehua Marae. Dad joined the fire service as a 19-year-old boy he was the first Māori firefighter in Christchurch. The aspiration for my nanny Emma, his mum, um, was for him to enter the police force. Um, that was her pai tāwhiti for him. Um, he got kind of close and entered the fire service. And um, my nanny Emma was always very proud of my dad. Uh, the photo on the left whānau is a photo of his retirement. He spent over 40 years in the fire service a very proud firefighter. On the right hand side is at my wedding um, and he retired by that stage, was very adamant he wanted to walk me down the aisle wearing his regalia. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dad spent a long time in the fire service, saved many lives, helped many Māori families. He recalled a whānau Māori that had lost their loved ones and just seeing Dad's face and being able to connect with Dad he remembers the pride in that Fano Māori um, and the pride he felt by able, being able to relate to another Fano Māori in that time of my life. Dad worked in the September 2010 and February 2011 earthquakes. He was on day shift that day. I still rem remember as the ground was shaking, seeing his head pop up in the window. Um, he made sure we were all okay before he went off with his crew that day. So Dad worked on the CTV and PGC buildings. He's seen horrific sites. He's helped many people. Dad over the years has faced massive discrimination in his profession. Racism that um, you can't even sort of fathom happening in today's society. He gained a lot of respect, however, in his profession. He was called Darkie by one of his officers for a period of time um, that was normalised. He set a firefighter officer examination three times, three different sittings, and you had to get over the 75 out of 100 mark every time he got on the 74 point something, never reaching that 75 mark. Um, in my view, and in Dad's, we both think something wasn't quite right. Um, going back a little bit to his upbringing, and further racism, he remembers in Gisborne a different seating allocation for Māori to Pākehā in the movie theatre. Not that they went to the movies very often because it cost a lot of money and they didn't have a lot of money. Um, he worked on a farm from nine years old with his parents, Ray Tuhoi and Emma Piawini, uh, from about nine years old and knew all the hills on Ngātapa. And that same whenua he worked on from nine with his mum and dad, who worked day in, day out for hours and hours and hours, was the dispossessed land of his tupuna. Um, that land is still owned by the same Pākehā family that owned it back then, probably, and that it's now a winery. Kāpai. Um, so there's a lot in there, whānau. A lot in that story. A lot of success despite adversity a lot to ponder on. Um, I need to let you know my dad never speaks with um, any ill thoughts, it's probably me and me getting angry for my dad, uh, but he speaks with a lot of toleration, a lot of respect and a lot of acceptance and it was how it was at the time. Half the things that he would accept for himself, he would never accept for his mokopuna. He always speaks of his upbringing with admiration, affinity to his whenua, his whānau. Um, and I often think Dad, at his age of 72, what would it be like for him, in his mind, in his ngāko, his art heart, as a 72 komātua not being able to be asked to go onto the paipai and speak to Reo Māori on behalf of his people. 
Um, this is when I turned to my nanny, Emma, and her cordial. She always said to my dad, you can't it on Māori. It's okay, boy, but do you eat Māori kai? Mm. And he'd always answer yes. So, um, you know, he is Māori. He has whaka papa Māori. He eats Māori kai. <laughs> but he still possibly has mamai and his ngāko for not being able to it on Māori. And this is where I turn to my dude, we. Um, so a lot of inter intergenerational mamai there whānau. My big boy we, named after my dad, 13 now. He attends uh, a 21st century pāwānana, te pāwara kai hotu, a kura, kura motuhake, a special character school in Linwood. Loves kapahaka, loves kai, <laughs> loves basketball, loves league. Those things that dad accepted, no, endured, he would never accept for his grandbabies. I asked my son, we, um, who are some successful people you know? thought he might say, oh, granddad, or he might say uh, I know, somebody that's a little bit closer to home. He started with Michelle Obama. So, oh, okay, The Rock, Kevin Hart. He said, they're famous. Doesn't successful mean famous? They have putia, they're rich. These comments gave me a good glimpse into my teen's idea of success. I then asked, who are some successful Māori? He replied, Kingi Tu Heitia, TJ Pedanara. He also mentioned Jacinda Ardern, that's where I have to say, oh, she's not Māori, but Kate Pai. <laughs> um, so, in my boy's world, his Pai Tafati, his version of success, was over there, like literally, globally, over there, when he had success right on his doorstep. He has Sophia Clark Walker, a rangatahi at te pā o rākai hautu school. Ngai tua huriri whakapapa. Tua hui ex-girl who just won second prize in Manu Kōrero speech competitions. Amazing. He's got exponents of kapahaka all around him. Um, but his paitāwhiti was influenced by the things he sees on TV, by the things he watches on YouTube, and probably by society. It's quite different to my version of what success is and my holistic, very widespread um, version of success. Despite adversity, Dad thrived in a very Pākehā world. That, in my version, is success. Um, supporting your whānau and knowing the right thing to do at Tangihanga, that is success, getting in the kitchen and knowing how to just where the tea towels go and all those things about how to make up your beds on the marae. That is success. I then asked my girl, my 10 year old girl that's in a rose, what do you deem success to be? Uh, she said, doing a good job. I could relate to that. Uh, success, very subjective. At Te Paura Hotu, we all three of my tamariki are now educated there is a different way of teaching and learning. It stems from restoring culture, identity and language and resetting the button of Māori educational underachievement for achievement. I don't want to dwell on educational disparities. Our kids hear it far too often. Um, that's where we turn to us. So I am a mum, yes, but I am an educator and I've been an educator for a while. And it's not our babies. They haven't got the other. They're amazing. We need to turn to us. We are the system. So as you know, a mum of three, probably many mums, many papa, many aunties and uncles in the room also. I'm an educator. We made the choice to put our tamariki and Māori educational spaces to ensure language, culture and identity would be acknowledged and celebrated daily wholeheartedly. Recently, however, we did ponder. We pondered over whether our big boy, we, might attend an English medium secondary school. We went backwards, forwards. It's a really hard decision as a whānau Māori because you know that potentially language, culture and identity won't be put on top. 
we finally came to the whakaro that removing him is like removing him from his whanau. Um, I'm a mother at the University of Canterbury and like Plex said, nearing the end of a doctorate, doctorate in education. One of my kaitahu interviewees in my study said this, when you're in a bilingual dual language or kura kaupapa Māori, ākonga Māori, they just fit, they're comfortable. Sometimes you see Māori kids in a mainstream and there's just not a lot for them. It's that whole whānau thing, whakawhanaungatanga. They feel happy in who they are and where they are. And then I turn to my dad. So we live in the front house, they live in the back house, so many of our kōrero involve mum and dad. And it was interesting to listen to dad and his whakaro when we were thinking about whether we would go to a different kura or school. And he said, don't do that to him yet. Don't burst his bubble yet. He's in a beautiful bubble right now where his language, culture and identity is valued daily, where he's comfortable, where he's known, where across the road he can go to his nanny tuis and have a kai after school, which is probably a big plus. <laughs> um, but his 72-year-old granddad wanted to protect him. Protect him from the potential of his name being said like why? Protect him from mispronunciation of other kupu Māori. Not take him away from a place that isn't a kura kaupapa Māori, but still is, celebrates everything about who you are. Your full self is acknowledged, and he doesn't have to leave parts of himself at the gate. So we are in here because there was something that made us decide to get into education. There was a purpose, there was a why. And in recent quarter all with my supervisors and one of my beautiful doctoral supervisors in the room, Letitia Fickle, we talked about the why versus why. We all hear about the what is your why? I think Nike said it a wee while ago. <laughs> um, but regarding, let's disregard, sorry, why and think about why. Who? Who was in front of you? Who are the babies you're teaching? Who are the tāma you're teaching? What is their whakapapa? So if we break down, take away the why and think about the who, it comes from the ngāko. We can break why up, whakapapa, nō here, identity culture, nō why, from who. Uh, ahure, ahure is like this uniqueness, special factor, mana motu hake, your absolute autonomy, self-determination. And e, ihi, every one of our babies has a specialness, an X factor. And if we, if that's centered in language, culture, and identity, you know, how could we embellish that? Why? And very lastly, Father, um, so I got my two. What is or success style quarter from my two biggies. This was my last one, my five year old Hawaii. And instead of giving me an answer as to success or redefining success, my five year old said, What is success? And I thought, Koina, you've got it. That's the part I there in a nutshell. What is success? Each one of us in the room redefines success every day. My big boy had a very different version of success to me, but it's my job as a mama, my job as an educator, to bring success a wee bit closer to home, to make that pai tāwhiti closer to home. <coughs> it doesn't have to be that he needs to be the rock, he can be the rock, and that little dude would love to be Hulk Smash. <laughs> <laughs> but we have people that we can aspire to be all around us every day. They have their granddad next door every day, and although they know only part of his story, his story is a story of success. Um, and to finish off, Fano, this is um, some of the factors that can determine Māori success. We talk about Māori success a lot. This comes from the Ka Awatea, Ka Awatea study. Uh, Sonia McFarlane, Angus McFarlane, Melissa Derby, 
and Melinda Weber. So it's in there, whānau. Identity, tu rangau wai wai, place, courage and resist, resilience. What are we doing to build the confidence of our babies so that they can go out there in the world being who they are? And a sense of inclusivity. When our kids are confident in who they are, when they've been built up in their why, we can, as educators, feel like it. Our job's done. And that's all good. That is me, Fano. Um, no, no, no. Talk about what we've got.